You may be seated. And if you are a kid from all the way up to sixth grade, then you can take off and have some fun uh, today. This past week, a few of us uh, went to district conference. Chris, Tammy, and, and Chad, and I uh, were able to go, and it, it was pretty cool. There was a lot of things going on, and we got to celebrate uh, the churches. There was over 600 salvations in our district uh, this year. That, 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 that is a big praise. Yeah, we can clap for that. Uh, I was able to also share Heartland's story a little bit. Uh, you know, Tim gave me 10 minutes to say something, and I think I went 15 or whatever. I don't know. Chris was there. He probably didn't time it, but Tim told me afterwards, you went over, but it was okay. <laughs> but, yeah, so, so people know what's, what's going on here in Heartland. It's, it's kind of rare and unusual that people are coming to, to, to Jesus like this, but we're so thankful that God's continuing to move uh, in this church. And, and uh, over the last few weeks, we've done this series called The Big Picture. Picture. The big picture really looks at the big picture of the Bible and kind of weaves the overall theme uh, through it all. Uh, first week we talked about creation, how God is creator and he created all things and he created us even in his image. That's an amazing thing to think about. God is the giver of life. He's giver of purpose and the giver of community. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for this community. We, we need community to be able to get through the hard times of life, but also to celebrate uh, the good things as well. The second week, we talked about the fall and how man was given all the freedom in the world except to eat from the middle of the garden, the tree in the middle of knowledge of good and evil. And yet he got uh, succumbed in, into the, the temptation that, that the serpent was saying, no, it's, it's okay, you can eat from that, you will not surely die. And that really opened up the, the, the Adam's and Eve's uh, life to, to, to see a whole lot more than, than, than they, they were expecting. It opened their eyes to shame and, and pain and, and, and fear and blame and all these different things that went on, but one thing they didn't realize is that every sin will go punish. There will be a punishment for it. Yet, even though that there was a punishment, you know, God uh, told Eve that she would have pain during childbirth, and Adam that he would have to sweat when he works now, and, and, and it would be hard and not be easy. There would be uh, all these thorns and thistles went in his farming. God still reached out to him and offered him grace and covered him with, with, with the uh, animal skin and, and covered him with grace, which is just an amazing thing. But that same image that God created them in was now marred. It was imperfect. It, it was something that was uh, just seen differently. They had a new vision. They saw things differently. And then in God introduced the covenant. The covenant, which a lot of us call the Ten Commandments, right? All those things that have to do with following God and, and, and really to be able to love neighbor. So it, it really breaks down to loving God and neighbor. And then uh, that shows really the relationships that are important and, and, and the laws that are based in relationship. And really, that God can be trusted that we can actually trust God. Then the next week we talked about the kingdom, how God is on the throne whether we acknowledge it or not. And how God actually pulled each and every one of us out of a pit and helped us soar like eagles. You know, if we follow God, we can be out of the pit and soar like eagles. And then Chad talked about Jesus, the story of Jesus, and, and summed up basically the whole story of Jesus in, in, in one sermon, how he came here to dwell with us 
and how he lived with men, which, which is a great thing. I love that Jesus was able to come down with his people that he created. He wanted to be with his people and help them in so many ways. He healed them and, 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 and raised the dead and all these different miracles that, that he had. And then he, he, he paid the ultimate sacrifice. He, he died on the cross for our sins, which is absolutely one of those things that is mind-blowing every time I think about it. But then... Not only that, after he died, a few days later, he rose again. You know, he defeated death to show that example for us, that we can actually have life after death. And then he said, I'm going to have to go, but I'm going to send a helper called the Holy Spirit and, and to be with you, and to not only just be with you, but to be dwell inside you, to, to help lead you and guide you in all these different ways. And, and it's going to be amazing, right? Because the church is beautiful. The church is beautiful because of the Holy Spirit living in us. It's, it's that uh, fellowship that we can experience with the church called koinonia along with the Holy Spirit that just makes it absolutely amazing. And we talked about how the church is the bride of Christ and how he loves the church and doesn't want anyone to make fun of him. Because, right? Like the church is special to him. And how Christ is also the head of the church. And if, if you take off the head from the body, it's dead, right? So Christ, apart from the church, means the church is dead, right? Just an absolutely great series. I, I've, I've really enjoyed going through that. Now, all the scripture that we've talked about so far has already happened. Today, though, we're kind of going to imagine, kind of like that song Ben sang. We can only imagine what's going to happen, how, how it's going to take place, and we don't really know how it's going to take place. Scholars would say there are four different ways it could take place, and no one can, can really agree on exactly how that is, but we do know that one day there, there, there will be the end. That it will happen. That Jesus will come back and, and, and be with us forever. He will be our God and we will be his people. And that's talked about in Revelation 21, 1 through 8. So please turn with me there and uh, we'll have it on the screen. And uh, please join me in reading Revelation 21, 1 through 8. It says, Then I saw a new heaven. And a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To whom who is thirsty I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is a second death. May we pray. Lord, this is your word. This is your truth. This is also your grace. Lord, open our eyes. Open our hearts. Open our ears to what you have to say today. May we bless you in your name. Amen. I was 
five or six years old and really just learning to ride a bike. And, and I had this new to, to me bike and, and, and was going around town and trying to do, you know, just learn riding bike. And, and we had this thing called a bike-a-thon at our school, raising money for something. I can't remember uh, what exactly it was. But have you guys ever been a part of a bike-a-thon? Because I, I don't really hear about it as much, but you have this track or something, ride around the track however many times, ra raising money uh, for, for something. And, and that day, uh, we, we went. The whole family went. And my parents asked me if I wanted to ride my bike back home. It was only maybe a quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile at most. So I said, sure, it would be good, and, and they would meet me at home uh, later on. And so I started riding home. Now, in this quarter of a mile, it's basically downhill, then uphill. <laughs> so, so I'm going down this hill, and, and, and then it happens, I hit a rock. Like, and, and a little kid that really doesn't know how to ride very well hits this rock and shakes and falls off. I, I, I feel like I probably flew like 20 feet, but it was probably two. You know, like it just kind of falling down and I skin, skinned up my knee and my elbows or something like that. And I was just kind of sitting there probably crying, just cringing and things like that. And my parents weren't too far behind me. They stopped, you know, helped me up and put me in the car and took me the rest of the way home. But I, I just think about that day and think about how much pain I was in. And it hurt, right? Like, and one day, I'm not going to have to worry about that. I'm not going to have to worry about pain. I can wreck my bike in heaven if, 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 if they have that. And, and, and I'll be good. Actually, I probably won't be able to wreck my bike because everything's perfect, right? Like, it, it'll just be good. Like, it'll be fun, and there won't be any more pain. A couple weeks ago, well, better yet, just a week ago, Jenny and I lost a friend, a friend that uh, we've known for about uh, 10, 10, 12 years, and, and, and uh, for, from leukemia. And, and over the last year or two, on Facebook, you know, we've seen her like decline and, and it was sad, but it still takes us off guard when, when she passed away and we're like, oh man, like it hurt. And I shed a few tears. I was sad. I mourned for my friend, Marcy. And mourned for, uh, uh, cried for, for, for Stan, her husband, who, who, who's still, still alive. It, it was just sad and I thought, Wow, one day I'm going to get to see Marcy again and there will be no crying or mourning or sorrow because God's going to be with us and we'll be with our God and we'll be reunited and it'll be good. And it's just an amazing thought to think and, and to think forward to, 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 to being there. Like, you know, because... We don't really know exactly what it, it's going to be like. We have some, some pictures with that, that God paints in the rest of uh, chapter 1, and I'd encourage you to go home today and, and read chapter 21 and 22 and, and look at it. It's just an amazing depiction of, of what can be and will be. But I love... I love how John is given this vision from God. And, and he sees this, this new heaven, this, this new earth, and, and a holy city, he calls it, a new Jerusalem coming down to earth. You know, a lot of times we, we think, well, we're going to go to heaven. But in the end, God's actually going to bring heaven to earth. It's an amazing thing if you really think about it that God's actually going to bring it and make everything new. So God is going to bring heaven to us. And, and I love how they, they call it a bride, right? Like that's, that's the description we talked about last week. And here it is again that, that the bride is coming down. It's almost like the bride is coming down the aisle and you're all standing and just looking at this beautiful thing coming in. And it's going to be 
Amazing. It brings this sense of anticipation, this excitement, the, this idea of preparing. And it makes me think of John 14, 2 through 3. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So I think about this. God's preparing a place for us. If we love him, if we follow him, if, if we have believed in our hearts and confessed with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, he's preparing. Preparing this place, this, this amazing place. We, you know, some of us think of it as a, as a mansion or may, may, maybe a, a, a room in this mansion. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool because he's been preparing for a while. <laughs> Like, like this, this is going to be a good thing. Now, if God is preparing this holy city in New Jerusalem, what are we doing to prepare ourselves? How, how are we preparing ourselves for eternity? Right? Today, the big idea is a holy city is meant for holy citizens. You know, there, 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 there's something beyond just saying, Jesus, I love you, and just kind of sitting around and waiting for, for, for Jesus to come back or, or, or for us to die, whatever happens first. You know, in fact, the, the, the first Christians, when, when, when they had Jesus leave and, and they were just coming to Christ, they, they, they were actually selling all their goods and their possessions. They were quitting their jobs and just waiting for Jesus to return. And, and they waited. And they waited some more. And, 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 and they were like, what's going on? Why, why, why hasn't he come yet? There, there was this anticipation, this, this excitement, this, this lingering going on. But what are we doing to prepare ourselves? You know, holy citizens first seek king, the kingdom and his righteousness. I think that's the thing that we have to figure out. How can we seek the kingdom? In other words, everything we do must first be about the kingdom about Jesus and about him uh, coming back, he, loving him and loving others and, and serving all, right? Doing those things that help us to show our love for him. You know, this really represents kind of a dying to self, kind of getting away from what we always want to do and realizing that God has, has, has a plan, a purpose for us. And it's not just to enjoy each other's company, but it, it's something beyond that, something more than that. It's, it, it's about proclaiming the gospel and sharing the good news with each and every person because people need to know about what is happening, what is going on, so we learn to live for Christ. These are the types of citizens God wants in his holy city. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect, right? But... JFK asked this question, ask not what you, your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I always thought about that. What if we place church in those there? Ask not what your church can do for you, but what you can do for your church. Or, or what, ask not what your world can do for you, or, but what you can do for your world. How you can live for Christ is the first thing that we should be thinking about. As, as people who love God. People committed to living for him. See, verse 30, it says, Now the dwelling of God is with men. Like, I, I, I love thinking about that. Like, he came for 33 years, Jesus did, to dwell with men. But this, this is talking about eternity. To dwell with men for eternity. This, this is something that doesn't end. It'll just continue on. Like, like, like we talked about at, with creation, God didn't have a beginning. He also doesn't have an end. He's eternal. Now, we have a beginning, but our souls do not have an end. There is eternity behind it. 
Now he will live with them, they will be his people, but God himself will be with them and be their God and he will bring comfort. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. No more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. It's going to be different there. It's not going to be like the world that we have today and experiencing today. It's going to be completely different because there's going to be no pain. The old order has passed away. What's the old order? The old order is death. Right? Death that came with, with, with Adam and Eve biting in, into the fruit. Death that didn't happen right that moment, but eventually people passed away. People died. Death was invited by our sin. Death would not have actually been before that. It was, it was meant to be a forever thing. It wasn't meant to, 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 to be that way. But we invited death when we invited sin into our lives. And he says here, who, He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Everything. Like just brand new thing is, if we're going to be made new, it means that we have to let go of ourselves and put ourselves on the altar. Because what, what Christ did, the, the first altar, like that, that, that he put his life on, upon, he really wanted to show what it is to let, lo let loose of his life for, 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 to set an example for us. Right? Holy citizens place themselves on the altar. Good news, though. Good news. Because cause, cause Jesus was the only perfect uh, sacrifice. Our sacrifice doesn't have to be perfect. Right? We are not perfect. We, we, we will fall. We will fail multiple times over. He's not asking for a perfect sacrifice because he's already brought it. He is perfection. He is what, what we all long for. God is not asking for perfection because he's already brought it to the table. While we don't do the perfecting, we must position ourselves on the table. That's when God can work. That's when God can use us, right? Because he doesn't change those who doesn't, don't want to be changed. We need to allow ourselves to be changed. He only works with those who want to be worked with. He doesn't force anything out of anybody. He wants to work and change us and make us everything new, but he only does that with an invitation. And then he... I love this line he said to, to John. He says, it is done. When he brought heaven to earth, he said, it is done. Kind of almost like Jesus did on the cross when he said, it is finished. It is complete. There's, there, there's, there's this completion to it. Almost kind of like the creation when, when, he, when he took day seven and just rested because he was complete. It was perfect. He, he, he was finished with his creation. He wanted to sit back and enjoy it. Like this, this is an amazing thing to me, to think that God's continually, from day one, has been setting us up to be made new. That, 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 that's just an amazing thing to me, to think that that's what he's been working for this whole time. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. But we need to let go of the old and let Christ do his work. You see, when Christ perfects his people, there is nothing left to be done. And we're all in that process, a little bit different on the, on the road. Because guess what? Everybody has, has, has been on a different path. 
We, we've come to Christ at different times. Some of us have, have not even been to Christ and, and, and we're still trying to figure out if that's something we, we want to do. But I love how he says it is done because it brings completion to that. God brought perfection to the cross and in the end, God brings perfection to us. Holy citizens also let the king do his thing. Let him have control because they trust him. It says, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give drink to, without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son or daughters. That's an amazing thing to think about, right? But there's something we need to think about too. Not everybody's included in that. We close with that verse eight. It says, but there will be some who are left out, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, the practice magic art, the adulterers and liars. I wanna focus on just one of those, the unbelieving. Because when you believe, that's the new definition of who you are. It takes away those other things like you're no longer cowardly because Christ gives you something new. He makes you into a new image. You're no longer vile. You're no longer a murderer. You're no longer sexually immoral. You're no longer practicing magic arts. You're no longer an idolater. You're no longer a liar because God made you something new. You, you don't do those things anymore. There might, might, might be times where you, you, you're tempted or, and fall into temptation, but you're now something new and you live a different life. You live for, for, for Christ and live for his kingdom rather than your own. You've put those things aside because you are created. The old has gone and the new is here. But the thing is, there are a lot of people in this world that haven't been made new. So there's work to be done. Prayers that need to be said. Conversations that need to be talked and discussed and show people, you know, we love you. <laughs> but there's something more. Here's something new. And while we won't be complete until Jesus does come again, we are new. We won't be made perfect until that final resting day when, when Jesus actually comes back and he makes everything new final, right? But we need to pray for those who have never come to Christ and need to come to Christ. For those that did not believe in their hearts and confess with their mouth. For those that need to live for Christ and his kingdom. For those that, that haven't really got to experience what loving God and neighbor and serving all really means. For those who have missed the mark and missed the purpose and what life could be. They never experienced resurrection. Imagine that. You never got to experience resurrection. There's, there's going to be a death. You know, we're, 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 most of us will leave this earth with, with, with a physical death of our bodies. But a lot of people won't experience that resurrection. I want more people to experience that resurrection in their own lives. Today we get to partake in communion. Communion is really a beautiful thing and I'm going to ask the uh, worship team to come up. And we're going to partake in the body of Christ. 
because he <laughs> paid the ultimate sacrifice. And when he did, he said it is finished and he screamed out his last breath. And when he rose again, that, that was a resurrection, when his body was made new, it was really an example of what could be for all of us. For anybody that comes to him and asks to be a part of his kingdom. So today I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward and we're going to pa pass out the elements. We're going to pa pass out the bread that represents his body and, and, and the juice that represents his blood. And partake in something that, that, that is holy, that, that, that we call a sacrament. This, this thing that makes us reflect on who Christ is and what he's done for us. And today, I want to let you guys all know, if you come to us from, from, from a different church visiting, we practice an open table. Everyone who claims Jesus is Lord and Savior believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth that Jesus is Lord can partake in this open table. And today, maybe, maybe you've never actually partaken in, in, in communion because you're like, oh, I don't necessarily believe. But maybe today, you can take your communion and say, today, I take a stand. Today, I say that I believe that Jesus is my Lord, that he is my Savior. With that, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so good. You are so amazing, so powerful, so wonderful. And today we want to give thanks. Thanks to what you have done in the past through creation and the fall, through the giving of the covenant and your kingdom. We are thankful that you are on the throne, that you sent Jesus to be with us, to pay the ultimate sacrifice. We're thankful for, for, for the church and what it represents. But we're also thankful for our future. Because if we are in you, if we have faith in you, we have something awesome to look forward to. Something amazing to celebrate. Something exciting to prepare for in this anticipation. So Lord, show us how we can continue to, continue to prepare for your kingdom. We praise you in your name. Amen.